Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. The latest version of Fedora, Fedora 30, is now out and available for download. It's always been one of the best distros to use GNOME 3, but they have added a few other desktop environments this time around, so let's take a tour of everything that's changed. The Desktop Fedora 30 ships with GNOME 3.32. While I've already covered most of the new features in that release in a dedicated video, let's recap what's changed. First are the performance improvements. GNOME 3.32 is now faster, smoother and more responsive, especially with the shell. While 3.30 already had added a bunch of optimizations, this is the version where GNOME really starts to be lag-free for me. I can't say I noticed any difference in fluidity between 3.32 on Fedora and its Ubuntu implementation on 19.04. Both are equally responsive now. The theme also has seen a bunch of changes. The most notable is in the icons, obviously, which abandoned the hyper-realist 3D look that was too hard to draw and incoherent with third-party icons. The Advaita theme also has been largely improved, with better contrast and colors, more rounded elements with more subtle borders and shadows, especially visible in the tabs and the header bars. I can't honestly say I like Advaita, but it's a good evolution and makes the default look on Fedora a lot better than what it used to be. The settings also have been an area of focus for this release, with a new sound panel, redesigned to be more legible and clear, and the addition of an applications page to manage file type associations for each app, as well as the storage space they use. Flatback apps will also display their permissions in GNOME software and in the settings. And if these are user modifiable, the settings panel will let users enable or disable permissions for each individual app. Nightlight can also be tweaked a lot more with a manual mode and color temperature selection slider. The virtual keyboard now supports emoji and users on Wayland can now enable fractional scaling by activating a deconf setting, which is not activated by default in Fedora 30 even though it defaults to Wayland. Obviously, if you want more details on these changes, I encourage you to watch my dedicated GNOME 3.32 video after you've done with this one. I do like the fact that the installer does not manage the user creation though. Instead, you'll be asked to create a user when you first log in, as well as confirm a few preferences. This is a good onboarding experience. They also add a welcome screen after installation, which explains how GNOME works, which is a pretty good idea. It uses videos and links to the GNOME user manual to explain how to accomplish basic tasks, and it's well executed. Under the hood Most packages have been updated to a more recent version, notably with the Linux kernel version 5. Fedora ships with Firefox 66 as its default browser, LibreOffice 6.2.2, Rhythmbox 3.4.3, and most default GNOME software. No other software seems added, making this a pretty light distro to install without any added bloatware. Installing multiple language support should now be easier, with the grouping of all language-related stuff in language packs. These include input methods as well as font packs to make sure that you can install a specific language support with just one package. DNF, the package manager, can now support more compression formats, which enables it to support downloading only the difference between what's installed and what's new. This should reduce the size of updates when checked often. Other desktops Fedora runs on vanilla GNOME, but they allow using other desktop environments as well. With Fedora 30, they added the ability to install the Deepin desktop environment and Pentheon, the one used on elementary OS. This is pretty fantastic, since both these distros have issues with using older bases and older package versions, but offering a user experience that is very specific and, in my opinion, ahead of what GNOME currently provides. They do come with limitations though, let's see how well they work. DeepNDE is pretty much unchanged. You can still get the dock in its two modes, all the specific Deepin software, and the sliding settings and notifications panel. It seemed a little less reactive on Fedora than on Deepin itself, especially after trying out Deepin 15.10, and it had a few glitches here and there, especially in the dock. Fedora even installs Deepin's GDK theme to make sure that GDK apps look like other Deepin apps. Installing Deepin DE is easy, you just install the group called Deepin Desktop. You won't get access to the Deepin store, but that's not really an issue since it's only sourcing older versions of software you'll find in GNOME software on Fedora. The main issue here was that my settings weren't maintained, 
such as the keyboard layout or the display configuration. I had to set it up all again on DPN settings, although I had already done that on Fedora and GNOME. Pantheon is a different beast. You can install it by running sudo dnf group install pantheon desktop. The problem is, it does not set by default the elementary icon theme or the GTK theme that goes with it, so many things look and appear broken. Some app icons simply don't show up, and the theme just doesn't look right. To fix that, you'll have to install GNOME tweaks and set the themes to elementary. Even with that, the dock won't look right, so you'll have to Ctrl plus right click on it, select Preferences, and switch the theme to GTK+. After all that, you'll have a pretty identical Pantheon desktop, except that you will be lacking the App Center, which is one of the most compelling reasons to install Elementary OS, as it stores a ton of great one-purpose applications designed with the Elementary OS guidelines in mind. Still, if you want to replicate the Deepin or Elementary OS experience, it's a great way to do so, and it's nice that these desktops have been included. Just remember that you'll have duplicate entries that might bear the same name. For example, both Nautilus and Elementary's file manager are called files, so you'll get two files entries in your menu, both in GNOME 3.32 and in Pantheon. Same goes for Terminal. To conclude, I'd say that for using Deepin, Fedora is a great choice. You'll get a more up-to-date base and avoid the whole Chinese distro controversy, although you'll still have to trust the various packages Fedora built. For Pantheon, I'll stick to Elementary OS, if only to have access to the App Center. All in all, Fedora 30 is a great release if you've been using Fedora 29. It's more up-to-date, and GNOME 3.32 is a must-have upgrade over 3.30 for the performance enhancements alone. Users of other distributions that don't really enjoy GNOME might want to try using Deepin or Pantheon on Fedora. With a bit of cleaning up to remove duplicate entries, they'll get a great base with the desktop environments of their choice. So that's it for what's new in Fedora 30. Obviously, there are a lot of other changes, but these were the most user-visible ones. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.